morning, good morning, and, and welcome here to Union Baptist Church, amen, on this wonderful Sunday amen. that amen. God has made, amen. amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, amen. amen. We will rejoice and be glad, amen. 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 His mercy, His kindness is greatly towards all of us, amen. The truth of the Lord will endure forever, amen. His truth will endure forever, amen. 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 Lord, give God a hand praise this morning. Give God a hand praise this morning. Substance of things hoped for, the evidence of 
faith, not seen. Through faith, we understand that the world was formed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gift, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him, for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. By faith, Noah being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear.
The Booker family, the Tate family, the Ivories family, Burley family, and Knight family. Deacon David Hill, Deacon Ricky Hill, Precious Hicks and family, Gwendolyn Anderson and family, Evelyn Bivens and family, Glenda Robinson and family, Kurt Hill and family, uh, Yolanda Jackson and family, uh, the Hoyt family, Robert Hitchens family, the Betty Mitchell family, Olivia and Jocelyn Bailey, the Bailey Page and Harris family, uh, Phyllis Jackson, William Bailey, Virginia Hike, Debbie, Aisha, and family, Vicki, Donald, Solomon, Renee, Tiffany, and family, uh, Brother Steve Larkins, Brother Stefan Hanzer, uh, Sister uh, and Brother Cooley, uh, Sister Ronna Shepherd, again, the McDaniel family, the Smith family, Alice Hardy, the uh, Brother Larry uh, Larkins, uh, Sister Pam Turner, and again the McDaniel family. Uh, Brother Kendrick Humble. Then all of our digital prayer requests as well. I have news, sad news. That's verified, Brother Hitchens. It did pass. Brother Hitchens passed. Well, yeah. That's my understanding that he passed. Uh, we miss his presence. He would come and worship when he was a member. Uh, Pastor Kevin Thomas, when we fellowshiped some years ago, uh, uh, we want to lift him up and his family, his wife, family, everybody in our prayers. Margaret McGee, Margaret McCoy, Alice Hubbard, Stephen Crystal Phillips, Anita Moses, uh, Roseanne Coward, uh, Cindy Clark and family, and the Hoyt family. So many to pray for. Yep. Yep. Freshness in a very hard and difficult time. Very hard to comfort. And 
not allow places to care limited in what you can do and how you can gather to comfort one another. We do lift up the eternal family in the place. Where you are virtually or uh, here in the sanctuary, the presence truly bow every head and close every eye as we just enter into the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for letting us talk to you. Thank you for listening to our prayers. We know, dear Heavenly Father, that we stand undone, incomplete, and unworthy. But you, God, oh great God, you just love us so that you look beyond all of that and you hear us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing our prayer. And yes, pity in every one of our moments. And now we come hastily to the throne, to your throne. We bow our hands in submission, we raise our palms up to you in provisions. We confess our sin with a repentant heart. We bow and declare that you are God. Thank you, Jesus, for your Calvary sacrifice and your grave defeating Sunday morning. For the washing of your blood, for your mercy and forgiveness and your saving grace. Thank you, Jesus. And Holy Spirit, thank you for rebirthing us, convicting us, interpreting your revelation for us, empowering us in Yes, God, comforted us. Yeah. There will we rest right now. The Heavenly Father, we, we ask for comfort for the Mitchell family, the Hitchens family, the Turner family, the Parenter family, the Gilead family, all those who to stand on your battlefield day in and day out. And they need to be uh, renewed day by day. We need to be lifted up, God. For this old body of ours get weary. Sometimes we get down in dejection. Lord, life comes upon us and our hearts get broken. And our faith is tested. Oh, God, we cry out knowing that you have You are bridge on the trouble water. Oh, comfort us. Comfort us. Mm, we need you. From the provisions of your way maker, God provides for us according to your riches and glory. Jesus, we need you in a torn, tired, and evil world. In the midst of sickness, pandemics, racial separatism, evil that lurks in the heart of humanity. Yes, I have to God, I come asking that we recognize the humanity of one another. That we will love each other as you first loved us. That there will be no hatred or malice toward anyone, God. Oh, 
we need you, Jesus. Let your church, let your church stand here and shine. Let your church stand and shine in the light of Christ Jesus on the sin sick dark world. God, use us to your glory. God, use us to your glory. God, use us to your glory. To God be the glory.
Old Testament book of First Chronicles to encourage you this morning as they have bring their offering in the building of God's house. I'm going to ask Brother Jackson if you will grab the offering in the generic basket to prepare yourself you can give to give the fire. Let me tell you this, boy. I thank God for you. We are in the midst of remodeling and phase one, and we just thank God for what you have been doing. Every one dollar matters. So give in abundance. You know, the Lord will truly bless you, and uh, the work of God will continue. So we ask that you just give in abundance. You can give through Givelify, our digital giving um, application. You can get that right off of our website, unionbaptistspiritpress.org, or you can continue to mail in at 3452 First Avenue in the historical village of Urban Crest, Ohio, zip code 43123. Again, that address is 3452 First Avenue, Urban Crest, Ohio, 43123. Now, you've been given faithfully. Let's give in abundance. The work continues. We need an abundance. We got great work to do. We got to put a new roof on and do some new flooring. And we want to get and all of this is to restore our youth educational development ministry. In times past, we've had things like after school programs, summer academic camp, um, camp mentoring program, um, computer room. We've had just so many vastness of early childhood development, and we want to take it to a new level. In the rooms affected down there are our youth rooms that we want to restore and build up and do some specific things and community things that God has called us to do in the mission of God. So we just wanted to share with you that this morning. Know that every dollar has purpose. You give in abundance. You can always contact the church if you need direction on that. The church number is 614-875-5748. Six one four eight seven five five seven four eight, and we can help you. We just know that to God be the glory. And in the midst of giving, uh, the Israel began to give, and they gave to the building of God's kingdom and the building of the temple. And in this chapter twenty nine of First Chronicles, it's going to read you several verses and listen to God's word. It will bless you. It will fortify you, and it will open the door, Amen, for you. In verse 9, I want to begin reading. Then the people rejoiced what they had offered willingly, because with a loyal heart they had offered willingly to the Lord. And King David also rejoiced with them greatly. And then David the king blessed the Lord before all of the assembly. And David said, Blessed are you. Lord God of Israel, our Father forever and ever. Then it goes on in verse 16 and says, O Lord our God, all this abundance that we have prepared to build you a house for your holy name is from your hand and is all your own. I know, I know also, my God, that you test the heart and have pleasure in uprightness. As for me and the uprightness of my heart, I have willingly, everybody, wherever you are, say willingly, willingly offered all these things. And now with joy, somebody say joy, joy. have seen your people who have presented here to offer, here we go, willingly to you, God. Today we offer willingly to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to give in abundance. With joy, joy, joy down in our hearts. We will ask you to be offering an envelope. Raise your hand, those who are present. Today, if you have one, I think I may need one. Let's see if I have one in my little. Just a minute, I've got one. How about your present today, man? Thank you. Again, God bless you. God bless you. If you get off an envelope, raise your hand. We're going to ask Brother Jackson to go around at this time. Make sure that you are masked up when he comes past you. Make sure that you are prepared to receive and keep Brother Jackson healthy. Amen? Amen. 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 Give us some giving music, if you don't mind. A little dancing music where you are. It's just good to give to the Lord. Thank you. 
tell you what he ain't. We'll give you a ticket. Amen. We thank God. We ended it up. Put the mask on. Put the mask on. Don't have to Put the mask on. Stay healthy. Stay healthy. Don't take the mask down. Amen. Brother Lockett, we're going to have to have a meeting. He's going to see your tank right there. So we thank God for you today. We thank God for your presence. Amen. And we know the Lord will bless. Amen. Keep the mask up. Thank you. So we thank God for you today. We know the Lord is blessed. So we want to make sure that we share those critical and information with you. The church has always been a source and a conduit of information. And we just want to bless to make sure that you all prepare what God will have. I don't blame you to spread three or four times. You ain't even going to spray it. We thank God for you today. Now leave me with this last thing before the praise team. Praise team, you can start coming right now. So we don't have any time wasting. So come on, praise team. You can prepare to come. Brother McDaniel, you can fix the camera. You can pull it back. We're going to get right into the praise song while I'm talking. Amen. And we just want to remind you to stay safe where you are. Keep masking up. Keep distancing up. Keep praying up. Amen. Respect one another. And just wearing a mask about nobody trying to tell you what to do. It's about protecting each other and having love for each other and the humanity we see in each other. Amen? Amen. So wear your mask, be safe. Uh, no, nobody knows the full extent of this pandemic. And we know one thing, we're going to keep on calling on the Lord Jesus Christ in all cities. We would turn to here. Everybody here is masked up. Everybody continues to be masked up. Pastor does not have time to be the mask complete. Wear your mask. Amen? Keep distancing. I don't want to see no holding and club close talking, hugging, and all that after service. Mind the rules. We got signs up everywhere if you don't have a memory lapse. Amen? Pastor ain't got time to do the Amen? I'm very serious with that. I ain't got time to come here and worry about y'all. I'm going to put your mask on. Keep your mask up. Amen? Keep that weed tight. I ain't going to call no name. Let's glorify the Lord. He's worthy. He's worthy. Come on, Brother McDaniel. Amen. It's praise time. We thank the Lord. All right. Come on. You fire, sweetheart. This is praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
on the first Sunday in August, and then we're going to meet outside. We're going to get our parking to a lot of grass, wherever, and uh, we're going to have communion together. We'll serve you uh, communion kits, and we will have communion pastors. We'll be outside no matter how hot it is. I will be rolled up, and we're going to have communion together. I want to see. Those guys have seen a long time. Get them here. Be safe. Stay in the car. But we will walk around. The brothers will walk around. Sister Kim, we will make sure that you get a communion and uh, communion and uh, when you come in and keep our brothers and sisters safe, and we're going to have a, a communion. We just not have been able to gather, and this is one way that we can gather. We need to gather. Amen. Amen. And uh, we're going to do it before this weather turns. So we're going to have that in the parking lot right out here on the first Sunday in August. And uh, look at maybe a couple other things we're going to do that day. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do that. Amen. And it's obvious uh, what is going on. It's very doubtful that we will have our annual church picnic like we normally would. It doesn't look good. So it just, uh, it's obvious it just doesn't look feasible to do that. But we're going to find ways of gathering. And this is one way that we can gather. Amen. And, uh, and just break the bread and drink the cup of communion. Amen. So these are heartbreaking. I got somebody in the hospital and talking to somebody this morning. I can't get in the hospital. Unless, hear me now, unless they're dying. These are tough times. These are hard times. These are challenging times. And this is why I think this message that God gives us is so critical in the 17th chapter of Acts. It teaches us to contend for our faith. To contend for our faith. Contend for our faith. Contend for the Those who sum up the faith of Christianity. And let me help for the world who tries to jab at Christianity. Christianity is, is monotheistic. It believes in one God, one Lord, one faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. Believe in one God. The triune, the Trinity as we call it, is speaking to three distinct personalities of God. In his movement and how he see fit and only he can do. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We try to explain it, but it just is, is beyond our ability to explain it. But our faith lies in this, in the good news. That Jesus Christ, his life, his, his, his incarnation, his life lived out, his crucifixion, his humanity dying, human deeply dying. God did not die. God never died, and God has never been born. There never was when God was that. And on Sunday morning, God rose up the humanity of Jesus from the grave with all the same power in heaven and earth. Through Jesus, the head of the church, unto the church, that we may assist and work with Jesus. For the reconciliation of the sin, sick, and lost humanity in this world. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, Jesus. for your grace. Yes. So his death, his burial, and then his resurrection. So we have his incarnation, born of a virgin, his life, his death, his resurrection, then his ascension to the right hand of the Father, and the fact that he is coming back. Thank you, Jesus. Now, in Acts, the 17th chapter, beginning in the first verse, I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Amen. Amen. Boy, look at that boy. Tall, buddy. Tall, man. Grand size, eight pounds. It doesn't look grown up. It is good to see. We have joy at union. Amen. We're not sterile at union. Amen. We have joy. Straight out, sis. I don't blame you. You've been in union as much as I would have. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I appreciate you 
standing in and working together for the kingdom. Now, when they had passed, so, so now we have Paul and Silas on this missionary journey. And they had moved up to Thessalonica. And, uh, and they are now in the synagogue of, synagogue of the Jews. And it was Paul's custom to go into the synagogue and there for three Sabbaths and said he reasoned with them from the word. You ought to look at your dog, look at the house if you're at home, wherever you are, the kitchen, look at the four walls, look at your name, hope you got the kids in front of the word. Paul is reasoning from the graphia, the scriptures, the word of God. And in verse 3, he said, Paul is explaining and demonstrating that the Christ uh, had to suffer, that the Christ, Christ means anointed one, okay? Christ means anointed one, that Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead and saying, this Jesus whom I preach to you is the Christ. <laughs> Paul is contending, he's contending for his faith. And verse 4 said that some of them there in the synagogue, three Sabbaths, three Saturdays, three weeks, if you will. And then in the synagogue, uh, some of them were persuaded. And a great multitude of the devout Greeks, and not a few of the leading dignitary the ladies, they joined Paul in silence. They got the men and the wives. Community, Jews and Greeks, they joined the church. They joined the church. But the Jews who were not persuaded, they became envious and took some of the evil men from the marketplace. So they left the house of God, went down into the world. And found some world folk. Got them together, put them in the form of a mob, and set all of the city in an uproar, agitators. Isn't it interesting that church folk know where to find the agitators? You know? Church folk will be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit until they feel like you wronged them, and then they're going to get that gang banging great grandson and his crew to come and do you in. Don't laugh, I've heard of it. Don't laugh, I've remained some places of name. Church knows where the world is, but we don't go with the gospel. We go with the mess. So they gathered in verse 5 of mob and set all the city up in uproar and attacked the house of things. And now, mind you now, be mindful now, they are under the Roman authority who did not like uproar. They didn't mind who the Jews worshipped because it didn't seem to turn their world upside down. Mm -hmm. But if it began to impact them, they would have issues. That says something right there. Mm -hmm. Many folks don't mind you gathering at the church house because they don't see. I put it like this. Remember the days when they used to bomb churches? And I know we still got issues today, especially overseas, and even here, churches get burned down. They don't mess with you unless they say you got an impact to me. I always like this false narrative that slaves came, that would be slaves, those who were enslaved came here not knowing God. That's a lie.
were not persuaded. They became envious. They took some of the evil men from the marketplace. They gathered a mob, set all the city in an uproar, attacked the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. But when they could not find Paul and Silas, when they couldn't find them, they dragged Jason. So apparently he was a resident of Thessalonica, and, 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 and they, they went to his house. Apparently he was, he, was, uh, he was hosting the church, and he was a central figure in that community in church life. So they went to his house, and some of the brethren to the rulers of the city, they worked a political angle, too. You remember what I said earlier about one of the rulers? So they went to his house, they drove Jason and some of the brothers out to the rulers of the city, crying out, these who have turned the world upside down. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be known, wouldn't it be good to know that you're turning the world upside down, church, for Jesus Christ, for the gospel? We won't be turning the world out of things, we're turning it upside down. They took them to the city officials, charged them, saying that they come, that Jason, excuse me, verse 7, have been harboring these world turned upside down as the world turns, so maybe they help you understand in that context. <laughs> that Jason had harbored them, and these are all who are acting contrary to the decrees of Caesar. I'm going to help somebody today, amen. We have to follow Jesus' law before we follow man's law. Amen. Jesus didn't mind following man's law as long as it did not contradict God's law. Right. But when it contradicts God's law, mm -hmm. then you got a problem. Then the church is supposed to stand up and say something. Say, no, not for eight minutes or some seconds. You're not going to strain the life out of a human being. Because he did not like the color of his skin and your preconceived notions. Mm -hmm. We got to stand up against this new Jim Crow, this, this incarceration for financial gain. These private prisons are housing our brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And it's the new cotton fields mm -hmm. of the 21st century. Yes, sir. They charged Jason and the church that they had been acting contrary to the decrees of Caesar, who's the Roman, who's in charge, the Roman king, if you will. And that was his title, Caesar. And they troubled the crowd. Mm -hmm. And the rulers of the city, when they heard these things, they charged them with saying that there's another king in the name of Jesus. Don't the church know how to do it? They will falsely accuse you. The church is not saying there is another king. The church is saying there is the king. <laughs> A name of the, all other names. The king of all kings and the lord of all lords. Who has no king. But they brought it down into a political thing. Somebody's charging and testing and challenging your political seat, mm -hmm. wow. Caesar. So when they had taken security, a bounty, other words, got some money from Jason, and the rest of the people, they let them go, men are in that Maria. Mm -hmm. They let them go, excuse me. So after they paid them a bond, they let them go. Then it says in verse 10, Then the brethren immediately, the church, the beloved of God, brethren, immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to what I mentioned earlier, Berea. And listen to this. This blows my mind. We got time to work and help us because we live in a time where you know you better be on purpose with your faith. Don't think that that way you using this pandemic and, and racial upheaval and, and society upheaval 
across this world and economic instability. Don't think the devil ain't using this, amen, to suppress the word of God and the good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to challenge the church's faith. Amen. 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 You better be on guard. Amen. That word continues me to wrestle. Preached the last week in, in June. That's why I thought this was a good illustration of what Jude is talking about mm -hmm. when he talks about our common faith. To contend, believers, brethren, the beloved of God, contend. We have but one faith, one Lord, one Savior. Contend for that faith. Yeah. Says for three Sabbaths, and that's another kind of, uh, Paul and Silas were preaching and teaching in the synagogue. And he would listen to him in church folk. You know, we all we want to tell folk about Jesus, but we never want to listen to their response. We never want to take the time to listen to the word and hear what they have to say. We always turn on the defensive. If you got faith in Jesus Christ, and you know that you know that you know that you know, why you get defensive when the world says something crazy about Jesus? Take a moment to listen and cover that conversation in prayer. It said they got Jason out of the house, had the phone, they had to pay, they had to pay a bond, they turned them loose. The brethren out of Thessalonica sent them down a little bit, we got to let them down to Berea, and guess what Paul and Silas did? Mm -hmm. Guess what Paul and Silas did? Guess what they did? They got nerve to find a synagogue in Berea, and they did the same thing that they got in trouble for in Thessalonica. Mm -hmm. And they went right to the synagogue, mm -hmm. preaching and teaching Jesus. Yeah. Boy, too many times when the tough gets hard and the way it gets hard, the church starts going. Mm -hmm. You and I, so we stand connected. Mm -hmm. Are you tuned in at 11 on Sunday? Numbers we indicate that everybody ain't tuned in. Church, are you reaching out to each other? Under the commonality of our faith? Are you reaching out and sharing and saying, Do me need at 11 a.m. on Facebook by? Just click on that envelope on the website. You don't even have to have a Facebook account. You can watch it later on on YouTube, but don't get lazy with that if you got Facebook Live. You can connect. Reach out to each other. Minister to each other. What if one of your brothers is in the lost and died? You sit around there and you can't even eat all your dinner. You got leftovers. That I means you had too much food. And your brother and sister could use some help. Your neighbor could use some help. Love demonstrated and giving. Help somebody. They went right in the synagogue. And Maria, they went right in the synagogue. Mm -hmm. Contending for that faith. Contending for the faith. Paul and Silas in the church demonstrated that you want, you got Jesus in your heart. And if you're willing to witness Jesus and be obedient to his parents and cry and go for that war and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them the prayer whatsoever, I command you, if you want to do God's will because you got the love shift, Paul and Silas, to the synagogue of Thessalonica. Paul and Silas had the love of Jesus sent them to the synagogue in Rhea. They had to leave under the cover of darkness, threats and a mind trap, but they kept on sharing Jesus because they kept on to the love of God. And they contended. We ain't got time to get 10 for the faith. We too worried and fretting. We too worried of having fun. Mm -hmm. We trying to figure out how to have fun. Mm. Too busy talking about folk. Jude said, I want you to have peace, mercy, and love in abundance. Mm -hmm. Multiply. Mm -hmm. When last time you call a believer? 
that you don't normally call. Check on somebody in your church family. Pray for somebody in your church family. Ask God to bless somebody in your church family. You see them out there struggling. You see them out there on social media out there posting pictures they shouldn't be posting, saying things they shouldn't. That's a cry for help. From a, a, a God gifted super, supernaturally empowered disciple to reach out into them in love. Yeah. Yeah. That's a cry for help. You drive down the street tonight and see Pastor Daddy stumbling, drunk and hot. That's a cry for help. <laughs> Don't get over, pull over, get on your phone and start texting and taking a video. Oh, we got Pastor McDaniel. After 20 years, we finally got it. No, no, no. Get him. Yeah, right. Something's happening. Probably yeah. mm-hmm. they put too much coffee in medicine, brother. They know what's going on, but I ain't going to say that. <laughs> Needs some help. And we have been, I'm talking this all the time, we're the only one that walked the face of the earth who had heavenly supernatural gift to be a blessing to somebody else. Yeah. We only want to have access to God's account to be a blessing to somebody else. God will bless you to be a blessing. They went down to the marketplace now an hour together. They went to Jason's house. Couldn't find Carlos. Let's stand in low. Carlos Silas didn't have to pay no debt, didn't have to pay no bounty. They in another city spreading the good news. Carlos Silas wrestled, that's what that word can tell me. They wrestled against persecutors of Christ Jesus. Yeah. That's, a false, that's a false teachers of God. Yeah. That's what this a false teachers of God. That's what the Antichrist is. Little Antichrist little imps. They are persecuting Jesus. They're persecuting the church. And the church has to stand and wrestle against wickedness in high places. The church has got to contend and wrestle for Christ Jesus. Wrestle for Christ's community. Wrestle for those who are seeking the truth, who are seeking Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So we got to learn how to put on the whole armor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Too many in the church, they want to put on their heavenly robes and their heavenly crown here on earth. They don't want to put on the whole armor of God. They want to too build to walk around in the right robe of righteousness and their crown filled with rubies. But they ain't battling for Jesus. They ain't contending for the faith. They're not willing to stand in the midst of persecuted persecution and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Uh-huh. Yeah. They're not willing to place up uh, their feet with the gospel feet, uh, yeah. to hurt their loins about the truth. Uh, yeah. They hold up the shield of faith with a bright place, a uh, bright place of righteousness upon them. Yeah. They ain't put the uh, helmet on or the sword. Of the living word of God. Yeah. Church, you gotta fight for the faith. Yeah. You gotta believe it. You gotta live it. You gotta declare it that Jesus is the living Savior. Yeah. Even in a pandemic. Yeah. Even in high, high, high unemployment. Yeah. Even in the midst of a cultural crisis, yeah. stinking. Uh, white supremacy and racism. We got to stand and declare that Jesus is the living Savior. We got to walk like Jesus. The church, we got to talk like Jesus. The church, we got to fight for Jesus. And then we got to learn to fight with Jesus. Knowing that you have already the victory in Christ Jesus. And then one day, yeah, you will get to put on your gold Well, at the proper time, you can put on your crown. One day you will walk around on the streets and pay with gold. But in the, in the, in the meantime, church, get on and help me stay on the battlefield for the Lord. Yes.
this. It's a very brief and unusual time. I pray that you will contend if you know the Lord for the faith. And if you don't know him, I pray you will seek him. He's not hard to find. He's not hard to find. I pray that you will go through the week encouraged with hope, never to give up. I pray that you will declare to somebody and show the love of Jesus by being a blessing to somebody else. That you will give unto others, knowing that God will give an abundance to you. Yes, I do pray you will show the love. Let blessings come out your mouth and not curse. So now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and and forevermore. Let the people of God say together. Amen. Amen. You unite everybody. Join us live Wednesday at 7 p.m. for Wednesday night. Don't forget tonight, ladies, wherever you are, join the Unionite Ladies 7 p.m. in the Word with Sister Williams. And tomorrow night, remember, ladies, we're going to be married men. You can call in men. You can start calling in. Real simple. And join the Monday night. God bless you and see you soon.